In this video, we're going to talk about transactions. So at some point, you're going to want to be able to run more than one query, and you're going to want all those queries to execute successfully, or else you don't want them to make any changes to the database whatsoever. So that's where transactions come in. So a transaction will treat several different queries as a single unit of work. So an example we're going to be looking at today is it's going to be where a user transfers money from their savings account to their checking account. So they're going to go ahead and it's going to take two update statements. So we're in this instance we're going to transfer $100. So we're going to take we're going to deduct $100 from our savings table for user ID number 2. We're going to take $100 out of their savings balance and we're going to add $100 to their checking balance. Now as you can imagine, if only one of these was to execute successfully, uh, you, you're going to have a lot of problems. Let's say, for instance, it was only able to take $100 out of the savings balance. Well, you would have a very upset, you know, very stressed out uh, customer on your hand, hopefully, you know, which would mean you'd have several customers doing the same thing. And on the other hand, let's say if it was able to uh, Let's say if it wasn't able to deduct from the savings, but it was able to add $100 to the checking. Well, as you can imagine, um, yeah, uh, users would probably, many of them would continually redo that transaction, just keep pumping more and more money into their checking account. And as you can imagine, if peop some people who have money that's not actually theirs, well, yeah, they're going to go ahead and find a way to spend it rather quickly. Uh, and of course, even if there was some kind of mistake and money wasn't spent you know someone may have to go if it was a big mistake someone may have to go back and change their taxes or a whole corporation may have to go and refile last year's taxes which can be really expensive so this could have a ripple effect to all kinds of other different companies and agencies so you want to make sure you know uh things like this where all the things you want to execute uh successfully happen or else no changes are made whatsoever so let's go ahead and take a look at transactions so a database transaction symbolizes a unit of work. And this is going to have two main purposes. You know, the first one is to provide reliable units of work that allow correct recovery from failure. So if any of our update queries don't execute, you know, we want to be able to roll back those changes to the point at which our transaction had started. So we don't, if something goes wrong, we want to roll it back so that way no changes were made to our database. And the second one is to provide isolation between programs accessing a database concurrently. If uh, isolation is not provided the program, uh, program's outcomes are possibly erroneous. So mistakes can be made, so we want to make sure that we're the only ones uh, be able to affect that part of the database while we're making that transaction. Okay, so uh, three of the terms that we're going to be uh, come familiar with is going to be begin, commit, and roll back. So we're going to go ahead and begin our transaction. So this is going to set our point where we can roll back to if something goes wrong. We're going to go ahead and execute our queries. And then if no errors occur, everything runs as, as expected, we're going to go ahead and commit and those transact all, the trans all the changes will be made to the database. Now, on the other hand, if we run into any issues, we can just roll back the transaction. It's going to change it back to the same state it was um, before we started that transaction. So, anyway, let's go to our code. And again, we're going to go ahead and create our SQL.db uh, data structure. Um, and we've created our function here, which is uh, our transaction from our savings to our checking. And this is gonna take our user ID and the amount that we want to transfer from our savings to our checking. And as you can see our function down here, uh, we're gonna go ahead and use db.begin to create something.tx. So this is gonna be of a pointer to type sql.tx. So let's take a look at the documentation real quick. Okay, so type tx, 
uh, short for transaction. So it's just a it's just a struct, you know, with unexported fields. But the important thing is going to be all the different methods it's going to give us access to. Now you don't see a begin here, but uh, the beginning of that transaction when we is when we create that transaction. So when we use SQL.DB the method begin. It's going to return a pointer to data type TX. So that's going to begin our transaction, and it's going to set that point. Or when we roll back, we'll roll back our database to the point when this transaction was created. So look at that. We're going to go ahead and begin our transaction. Uh, we, we're going to go ahead and query some rows to get the values so we know how much is in the checking and savings. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and you know take that amount and minus out and add to accordingly. Uh, we also have tx.execute, which is where we're going to have our our update statements. So these are return result and error. If something doesn't go right, we'll go ahead and run rollback, which will change every the database back to the point before our transaction was created. But if everything runs successfully, we're going to go ahead and commit those changes. So again, uh, we use the uh, db. Begin to create our transaction, so we have our point which we can roll back to. And if everything rolls, uh, if everything goes as as we hope it does, we're going to go ahead and commit it. And if not, then we're going to go ahead and roll back those changes. Okay, so we're going to create our TX data type. Uh, we're going to have our checking balance and our savings balance, and we're going to use TX dot query row. So we'll, this is the method on that TX. Uh, Data type, and we're going to select from balance from save uh, select from the balance from the savings table where the user ID is equal to that user ID, and that user ID we pass in uh, up here, which is going to be user ID two, and we're passing in the amount of that we want to transfer is going to be 100. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and see how much we have for our balance inside of our savings. We're going to go ahead and save that val scan that value, and we're going to save. That value into saving balance. If there was an error, um, actually, we probably don't need to roll anything back because we're just doing a query, but we're just going to go ahead and end the uh, transaction um, with that statement there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and print if we had an error, and then we're going to run return to end this function if something didn't uh, run as we expect it to. Um, same thing here. Again, we're going to go ahead and run the query row on. Uh, method on the TX uh, uh, struct, and we want to make sure that we return that balance from the checking table where the user ID is equal to that user ID that we passed in. Again, we're going to go ahead and scan and save the checking balance of our variable. And if we had any errors, again, we're going to go ahead and end our transaction. And we haven't made any changes, but it's going to go ahead and end our transaction. And then we're going to go ahead and print that error and end uh, this function that we're in. And again, like we said, we're going to go ahead and take whatever this, the savings balance was, and we're going to go ahead and deduct that $100 and then save that back to savings balance. And again, with the checking balance, again, we're adding that $100. So we're going to go ahead and add that $100. So it should be $100 more than what we, be, we started with. And here, I'm ju we're just saying, hey, we're going to be attempting to set the checking and the savings. So it's saying what both of these balances are before we execute our update statements. So we're going to run tx.execute. So tx.query row for returning rows, when we're going to do something like an update or an insert, we're going to use .execute. And we're going to update the savings table and set the balance equal to, which is going to be that savings balance that we've already deducted $100 from, where the user ID is equal to the user ID that we passed into our function. And we're going to go ahead and return a okay, possible error. We're going to return a result. Now, on result, we have that method rows affected. We're going to go ahead and save that to a variable called rows affected. And here, I'm just printing what the error is and what the rows affected are for you know uh, uh, from this query. So that way, we can see them. And here, we're going to check and see if everything ran fine. Now there's two different things we need to check for here. Uh, we want to make sure if we get an error, uh, if, if everything runs successfully, it's going to be nil. If it doesn't, it's going to be something other than nil. So if 
execute dot execute error is not equal to nil, we have a problem and we're going to roll everything back and then we're going to go ahead and return. Now here we you would also log these log or print these uh, errors when you run into them, but being them already printing our information up here, this seemed redundant. But anyway, in real life, you go ahead, you'd be uh, saving this to your log. Okay, so we're going to make sure we don't not, do not have an error, making sure that exec error is nil. Or, so we're also going to make sure that rows affected, if it's not equal to one, again, we're going to run this part, we're going to roll back changes, and we're going to go ahead and use return to end the function that we're in. So execute for this, not this part not to execute, we need to make sure that this is nil, that we didn't have any errors, and we know that yes, we're going, we're expecting to affect one row. So if it was zero or some other number, we're gonna have a problem. So we need to make sure that rows affected is equal to one. And again, we've just like we've updated the savings table, doing the same thing here with the checking table. We're setting that balance to check balance and user ID. Uh, same thing here. Uh, we're gonna, again, we're just gonna check to see if we get any errors and if, you know, see if the rows affected is one, it needs to be one or else we have a problem. We're gonna roll back and return. So on either one of these, uh, no if, if the rollback is executed, no changes will be made to the database. So if everything ran as we hoped it would, then down here, we're going to run tx.commit, and those changes, you know, if there's not an error, those changes are going to be made to the database, both those updates. And if there was something wrong with this commit method, you know, if it's not nil, well, yeah, we're going to go ahead and just print that error. So let's go ahead and run this. And before we run it, let's go ahead and Select so checking is 100 as expected. Savings is 2000. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that. Oh, we got to change to our our folder. Oops, wrong one. There we go. Okay, so we're expecting to try and change this before update statements that to 200, this to 1900, which makes sense because 2000 minus 100 is 1900, and adding 100 to 100 is 200. So from our first update statement, uh, the error was nil, rows affected is one. That looks good. Same thing for the second update statement. So let's go ahead and take a look at our database. Okay, so savings. Let's see if it took away that $100. It did. And let's go ahead and go to our checking. And it added $100. So let's go back to our code. So everything ran as, as expected. Now, let's say if something doesn't go as expected. Um, we don't have a user ID of 25. So this should run into a problem. So we should not uh, add another hundred dollars to check in. We should not reduce savings by another hundred. No rows and results set. So it got down to here, rolled back in a transaction and return. And if we go to our database, it should stay 1900 as it does. 200. All right, very good. Change that back to user ID. And let's say we run into an issue over here. Let's say, let's just go ahead and change the second one. Say if this one doesn't, this one would be fine, but this one we're changing to a user ID that doesn't exist. So this should not change it as well. So this should roll back and there should be no changes to either of those to the database. Okay, so before the update statements, this is what it was planning to do, was update that one, to, you know, 300, this one down to 1800. Now, update savings, execute error. So we didn't get, both of these were nil, 
So we didn't have a problem with the error, but the rows affected on the second one was not one. So, so since it was not one, this became true, this part executed, and we should have rolled everything back. So let's go back to our database. See if it should still be 1900. All right, there we go. All right, very good. Okay. So in short, uh, we're going to go, you know, this can be very useful um, when you want all or nothing, you want it to execute successfully or nothing at all. Um, so again, uh, you're going to use db.begin to create your TX, your, your TX, your transaction. And then from everything past that, if you run into errors, run any kind of problem, you want to make sure you go ahead and use uh, tx the method, tx the rollback method. And that's going to go ahead and make sure no change were made to that database. You know, same thing with your update statements if you have any issues. But if everything runs as expected, you know, make sure you run this commit because no changes will be made to that database. Um, even if those run fine, if you don't commit it, it won't, it won't make those changes to the database. And plus, it won't end your transaction. So... Uh, make sure you do all of those things. So, um, like to say a big thanks to everybody. Uh, thank you for sharing uh, the content on different platforms. Really, really does help me out. I really do appreciate that. Um, if you like the content, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.